to another episode of the Movie Brothers. I'm Ant. This is Kev. Thank you guys for tuning in. Oh, once again, Kev and I are so proud uh, and glad that we have finally, uh, thanks to you, cracked that hundred number. That 100 number of subscribers uh, to our channel, uh, you guys have responded and we very much appreciate it. Uh, with that said, we're going to run down the list of the latest subscribers that helped us accomplish that. So here we go. Uh, Franklin Bell. Frankie. Aaron Bougon. Aaron. Bobo Camby. Rob Bass. We see you, bro. Mobbish 100. Uh, <laughs> Kushite Prince <laughs> and Slime HD. Slime in the ice machine. <laughs> that's that's the old, that only ant gets. Hey, that's the old Houston reference. If you're from Houston back in the day, Marvin Zendler, rest in peace. But anyway, uh, today we are reviewing the film Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1. Uh, to commemorate this film, I almost have bought you a uh, Mockingjay bow tie that basically catches on fire when you put it on and just like disintegrates into nothingness. Yeah, I'm really kind of glad that you didn't do that. I'd prefer not to leave this shoot on my way to urgent care with <laughs> second degree burns on hey, my neck. Hey y'all, in the next episode you see Kev at like this turtleneck <laughs> covering up his burns. Yeah, not happening. <laughs> but uh, hey guys, this, this film is uh, rated PG-13, has a runtime of two hours and three minutes. Uh, this film features the continuing adventures of Katniss Everdeen as she contemplates leading the districts of Pan Am in open rebellion against the Capitol. This movie was directed by Francis Lawrence. Uh, he's responsible for The Hunger Games' Catching Fire, as well as Will Smith's I Am Legend. Uh, this movie stars a plethora of talented people. Uh, we have Jennifer Lawrence, we have Josh Hutchison, we've got Woody Harrelson, we've got Liam Hensworth, mm -hmm. we have Marshala Ali, Elizabeth Banks. Uh, good gosh, <laughs> you know, how many more can we throw in there? Um, this is typically the point in time where we would throw it to a trailer to let you guys see the, uh, the, the trailer or the preview for the film. But since both Ant and I are too pretty for prison, <laughs> we've decided that uh, we will provide you with a link at the end of the show for where you can go and take a look at it uh, free of charge. Yes, we will do that, absolutely. And Kev, I don't think they'll let you wear your bow ties in prison. So kind of hard to coordinate that with a jumpsuit, an orange yeah, jumpsuit. Yeah, yeah, you might have a problem on your hands. So uh, Okay, Ant, this movie has been described by some as the Empire Strikes Back of the Hunger Games trilogy, slow down, <laughs> okay? Please slow down. Uh, while it does manage to change the game a little bit for the franchise, uh, it only really gives the series a gentle boost, okay? Uh, and provides something that it sorely lacked in its uh, first two outings, which was a sense of purpose and a sense of urgency. Uh, we now really understand what people are fighting for and uh, we've transitioned from uh, teen on teen violence to puppy love to uh, now a war movie of sorts and I'm not so sure that it makes that transition as smoothly as it should or as it does in the books. Yeah. Um, Kev, I, I gotta disagree with you about the point of the urgency, man. I mean, that was one of the big things that was lacking for me uh, in this film. Uh, this film was DOA for me. Because what we're getting is basically a movie about the planning of a rebellion. Right. And so with that said, I never thought from, from the jump there was enough here to make its own standalone film. This story should have been part of the larger story of what's happening uh, in, the, in the Hunger Games. Well, it kind of is. But, you know, to your point, whether or not it makes the transition from the page to the screen as its own standalone film properly mm -hmm. right. or successfully, that is a good point. Um, because uh, there are plenty, some, plenty of moments in this film where you're sitting there waiting for something, anything to happen, okay? It is dialogue and exposition heavy, and I could really imagine, I didn't see the movie with Ant, but I could imagine him squirming in his seat for three quarters of his runtime, if not longer. Kev, uh, you would be correct <laughs> in that statement because, yes, I was squirming uh, and twitching a little bit at times as I sat 
through this freaking movie. Um, we somehow end up, I don't know if it was a trap door uh, or what, but uh, we somehow end up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, don't, don't take us back there. Uh, but we, we, we end up in this Twilight trilogy meets Beverly Hills 90210 thing going on with this, just the, these teen relationships of uh, Peta and Katniss and Gail and this love triangle thing going on. And I'm like, dude. Aren't you planning a rebellion? I mean, there's some bigger things going on right. here, right? Yeah. And I'm like, what, what the heck is going on? So, <laughs> so instead of us focusing on, hey, what's really happening, we got, Bryn, I have a headache. Who the hell is Bryn? <laughs> Brenda from Beverly Hills 90210. <laughs> I, I was, really I was shocked that I, you even know that. I, I, go I, ahead. I, I reenacted my role of Dylan. <laughs> okay. Y'all remember Dylan, right? <laughs> oh, man, anyway, whatever. But, uh, you know, that's what we get. So we, we got this Beverly Hills thing going on that's wrapped in a sci-fi flick. Didn't work for me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's move on to the acting a little bit. Yes, let's. <laughs> I feel like Jennifer Lawrence has played the role of Katniss for so long that she's got it down. She knows what she's doing as far as it's concerned. She's bringing nothing new to the role, nothing special to the role. She could do it in her sleep, and I kind of feel like that's in some ways what she's doing <laughs> okay um speaking of sleeping <laughs> julianne moore oh my gosh she is one of the greatest actors that we have and she just really kind of sleepwalks through this role um yeah donald sutherland you know he's got a trademark on sneering <laughs> and looking smarmy you know in a movie so you know it's not a stretch for him to do what he's doing but we really do miss Philip Seymour Hoffman. Oh, the more man. we see him in this film, the more we realize how much we're going to miss his presence on the big screen. No, absolutely, man. Uh, there's a scene in, in, in the film where Philip Seymour Hoffman delivers this line. He says, anyone can be replaced. And it's so haunting when he says that line, man. It right. just it really hits you. But he, So he'll definitely be missed. Mm -hmm. A solid cast overall, as Kev mentioned. There are two bad apples in the bunch. You mentioned one already. <laughs> Jennifer, uh, well... Um, Julianne Moore. Okay. Jennifer Lawrence for me didn't she didn't even you know mail it in for me. I mean I really had a problem <laughs> with the way she she probably you know, expressed it for you. <laughs> yeah, man. It was, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Um, one of the problems I actually cried so much in the movie, Kev. I don't. Maybe it's just me. Man. I'm just insensitive. But it was like you know normally somebody's crying, you want to like you feel sympathy, you want to hug them. You know, pat him on the back, or you may be a little irritated, <laughs> or just like, will you stop crying? Wow, and I was coming from the latter camp of, I just wanted to give her some tissue and say, look, go clean yourself up, <laughs> come back out, and let's go fight. All right? <laughs> And so, you know, that's what it was from the acting camp. But overall, like I said, it was it was a solid cast. So I, I mean, mean, the movie does brighten up when it, whenever Woody Harrelson or Elizabeth Banks hit the scene, it does brighten up. They they provide some much needed comic relief. They do, they they do. And you mentioned Harrelson, man. I I from, from, even from the first film, I have never gotten him as Haymitch. I, I just I for that character, I expected someone much older. Okay. Uh, Harrelson's a great actor. I don't take anything away from right. his performance, but he's just kind of miscast in that role, for, just just for me. But uh, okay. with that said, Kev, can we throw some points on this thing? Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's face it, this movie is unlikely to recruit new fans. Uh, <laughs> it gives people exactly what you would expect it to give. Um, it was interesting, however, how they really went the cerebral route of focusing on the role of propaganda yeah. in a war effort. And I yeah, thought that was really point. interesting to, to see them really explore that. Okay. But you know, other than that man. So so Kev, I got two questions for you. So okay. so first question is, what do you rate this film? Uh, I would give this film a seven out of ten, Anthony. Okay. <laughs> now oh now I'm Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> Second question is, so at the end of the day, would you tell our viewers to go see this film? Yes yes or no? Uh, it's not that simple. If you're a hardcore fan, go see it, okay? If you've never picked up a Hunger Games book or seen a Hunger Games movie, save your ducats. Okay, all right. Thank you. Uh, for me, it is simple. <laughs> and the answer for me is no. I would tell you to save your money. Um, I haven't been impressed with any of the Hunger Games films. 
and this one is no different. Uh, I'll use Kev's phrase, uh, cash grab. <laughs> That's what we have going on here because really, like I said, this film should not have been its own standalone. I mean, the story should not have been its own standalone film. It doesn't warrant that with just what we get. We, we, again, we have the planning of the rebellion. Right. Uh, I felt like it was ballsy by the studio to make a move like that. I mean, it's just like you got to have some, some, some big balls. <laughs> I'm can getting we, kind of we, uncomfortable when you say, say balls so yeah, many times. Yeah, it is times. a little uncomfortable for me, okay. too, so I think I'll stop it. <laughs> Thank point, you. But I think y'all get my point. It's a bold move to do something like that. And it was, as like I said, with Kev's words, it's a cash grab to, to do that. I don't appreciate it. Uh, at the end of the day, for me, I give this film a 5 out of 10. Save your money. Okay. Well... That brings the Movie Brothers to a close. We'd like to thank you for continuing to support us. We're over 100 viewers. That's because of you. Mm -hmm. Tell a friend. Share us with somebody, okay? We need more people coming in to see us. Absolutely, absolutely. So how do you do that? Uh, you can go like our Facebook page. Or you can follow us on Twitter, at The Movie Brothers. Yep, and most importantly, make sure you subscribe to this channel. And so with that said, we're going to wrap uh, we are the Movie Brothers. I'm Ant. This is Kev. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the place, uh, make no mistake, the one and only place where we bring you nothing but the real, real. on the real. Peace.